Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the Gaussian surface. Let's do a quick review. So what do we do with the Gaussian surface or what even is a Gaussian surface? Well the Gaussian surface is a technique used to very easily find the strength of electric field at some distance away from some charge distribution. So let's start with a linear charge distribution where the charge, the charge distribution can be represented by lambda, linear charge distribution. And so a Gaussian surface is simply an imaginary surface that's drawn around the charge distribution in such a way that the, the side of the, of the Gaussian surface goes right to the point of interest. So let's say I want to find the electric field at this point right here, or I want to find the electric field at this point, or even further away, it doesn't matter. I simply draw the Gaussian surface so that the side of the Gaussian surface goes right through the point of interest. And that's the key to it. Then the theory goes that if we multiply the electric field anywhere along the Gaussian surface, now only the side matters because the edges don't matter, there's no electric field going through the edges, only through the side, so notice that we have electric field, I'll draw in a different color, going outward in all directions, up, down, sideways, you name it, electric field goes in all directions, and so when it goes through the Gaussian surface at that point, that's where I want to find the magnitude of that electric field. Now, it says that the integral of the electric field going through the surface at that point multiplied times the surface element of the Gaussian surface, dA, will equal Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. So the charge inside divided by the permittivity of free space. Now, what does this integral entail? It's simply the strength of the electric field multiplied times the surface area of the Gaussian surface. And in this case, only the side of the surface, the edges don't matter because there's no electric field going this way, only outward in 360 degree direction through the side of the Gaussian surface. So the area is going to be the circumference times the length, that's going to be the surface area, the side of the Gaussian surface, multiplied times the strength of the electric field, equals the charge inside, which is the linear charge density times the length, divided by epsilon sub naught. Then you realize that the length cancels out on both sides, so it doesn't matter how long or how short we made the Gaussian surface, and so the electric field becomes equal to this quantity right here. Now, realizing that 1 over 4 pi r is k, or I should, sorry, take that back, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is equal to k, the constant k. If we multiply both the top and bottom by 2, we end up with 2 lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the radius of the Gaussian surface, and it reduces to this, which is a, a, a more common equation for the electric field, a distance r away from a linear charge density. So we see that we can very easily get the same result as we did a few videos ago when we integrated. Now, does it matter if we take a small Gaussian surface, a bigger one or a bigger one? The size of the Gaussian surface is completely determined by where we want to find the electric field strength. So notice that if, if it's farther away, we make a bigger Gaussian surface. If it's much farther away, we make a much bigger Gaussian surface. The key is that the surface itself goes through the point of interest. So we simply replace R1 by R2, and we get a small electric field because we're farther away, or we replace it by R3, and again it'll be a small electric field because we're farther away, but the key is that we set the Gaussian surface around the charge distribution, two rules, that the side goes through the point of interest, where we want to find the strength of the electric field, and we now want to make sure that the electric field goes perpendicular to the Gaussian surface. So notice that since we have a cylinder, the electric field as it emanates away from the line charge in all directions will always be perpendicular to the surface of that Gaussian surface, since the Gaussian surface is a cylinder, and that is how it's done.